five in the SEC. Spectacular weather here in Gainesville. And strike one to Ali Newland to get things started. We welcome those of you who watched Tennessee win the thriller against Georgia 3-1 the final. Eric Freed, Tennessee All-American Matty Shipman here with you in Gainesville. We are two pitches into game two of this series between LSU and Florida after the Gators took game one. Such a great matchup this weekend between both of these teams. And talked about it yesterday, just how differently these both, both of these teams are constructed with LSU having a ton of veterans top to bottom in their lineup. Florida with a bunch of newcomers, a lot of freshmen that have been really standouts for their team so far this season. The one, two to the leadoff hitter has hit well the right field, dropping quickly and off the glove of Katie Kissler. And Allie Newland has a leadoff single for LSU. If you're just joining us, Maddie just pointed out a moment ago for Ava Brown, the freshman from Texas. She will pitch to contact. This is an outstanding Florida defense, but no getting that one for Katie Kistler and Wright. Ava Brown doesn't get phased when batters are putting the ball in play because that's what she's trying to do. She's trying to nibble at the corners, get her pitches to move in different directions. Not going to go out there and throw a ton of strikeouts, but really rely on that solid defense that she's got behind her to try to get her out of some jams. Here's Sierra Briggs, grad student, plays center field, 362 on the season. Was one for three with a run scored in yesterday's 4-2 Florida victory. <laughs> Laying down the bunt, perfect. Just spins right in front of the plate, sacrifices successful. Newland, the second one away. It is alumni weekend and a Florida alum is in the third base coach's box, but she's also the head coach of LSU, Beth <laughs> Tarina here at her alma mater, hoping she can coach her team to a bounce back victory and even up this series here today. Here is her top player, Taylor Pleasance, who takes ball one. Coach Tarina did have a big smile on her face when we got a chance to talk to her about it being alumni weekend here down at Florida. Not too often do you get to play in the series when Alumni weekend's going on down here. There's a strike to Pleasant since 1-1. One one. The former Beth Dieter, who was a walk-on at Florida when this program started up and was part of that 1998 SEC championship team. Pleasant slips one to left field. That's Corby Otis. Two down. Nice job battling the sun out there in left field by Corby Otis. And there's plenty of sun. The forecast could not be better. No rain in the forecast here in Gainesville. 71 degrees and sunshine at first pitch here on a Sunday afternoon. She knows what it's like to play left field on this on this home stadium. And got this, some fans that are yeah, very that veteran fan, veteran even, move out there. When you rock a jersey that says heat, you you know how to stay out of the heat <laughs> when it calls for that. Raylene Gutierrez with two down here for LSU. Gutierrez was one for three with an RBI on Saturday. Check their swing, it's 2-0. and oh. Brown will hit for herself, and she is an outstanding hitter. Made three appearances last weekend against Mississippi State through eight, in eight innings. Gave up 11 earned runs and a wild slugfest. Ground ball right side. Williams, great play. Skips it over to first in time. That saves a run, and it ends the inning. How about the defense? The first pitch to Kendra Falby misses for ball one. Falby followed in the lineup by Skylar Wallace, Corby Otis, Jocelyn Erickson, and Reagan Walsh in the number five spot. Hit the three-run home run to give Florida the victory. Falby's got good speed. Pleasance. Has a great arm, one away. Rest of the lineup. After Walsh has Katie Kistler, Ava Brown, Ariel Kowalewski, Avery Gells getting the start at first base. Really good mix of speed and power in this Florida lineup. You've got a ton of speed at the top, of course, with Falby and Wallace. But Otis, Erickson, and Walsh providing a ton of pop, both from the left side and the right side in that order. Here is the reigning player of the year in the SEC, Skylar Wallace who takes strike one. Top four hitters in the SEC are the top four hitters in this Florida lineup. Wallace leading the way. 
at 475. One on one. Tim Walton's team hitting 365. They have scored 336 runs, which is not only first in the SEC, it is 68 runs more than the second place team in the SEC, and that's Mississippi State. When you go through and look at their schedule, too, it, too, it seems like run roll after run roll, this offense firing on all cylinders through the first half of this 2024 season. 25 run rule wins for Florida. 3-1 Wallace. Of course, if you weren't with us last night, uh, I, I just want to remind everybody I'm sitting next to a former All-American shortstop, and she was very excited about this matchup, not just because LSU versus Florida, but because Skylar Wallace and Taylor Pleasance are both on the field here for this matchup. You Two know, of the very best. I always like to look for the games within the game, too. Of course, you've got the rivalry between LSU and Florida. It's alumni weekend. Beth Tarina is back here at Florida, the school that she played for. And then, of course, you've got this battle between the shortstops with Taylor Pleasance and reigning SEC Player of the Year, Skylar Wallace. Both of them play a little bit different, but so strong. You got Skylar Wallace with a ton of speed. You're going to see her really steal at will throughout the season. Saw her add another stolen base to her numbers yesterday. She is 26 of 27 on the season as Corby Otis steps in. I'd say that's a pretty good clip that is for Skylar a good Wallace. That is percentage, yes. One on one. And all the range of Taylor Pleasance and her tall frame over at shortstop, too. She's the one that's going to be covering second base now, and you can see her taking off to cover two after every pitch just in case Wallace takes off. Two and one. It's the cat and mouse game, too, when it comes to stealing bases. I always felt that I wasn't necessarily having to beat the throw from the catcher, but I was having to beat whoever was at second base applying the tag. Bajran sound an outstanding job of controlling opponents' run games this year. There's a strike. It's two and two. Another game within the game because coming into this series, Bajran had only allowed five stolen bases in nine attempts this year. That's out of play. Excuse me, four stolen bases in the nine attempts coming into she this season. She was five for nine, She was five for nine, right? nine yes. yes. But you've got a ton of speed in Florida's offense. Trying to see if they were going to take a chance, try to run on Bajoran, and the only one to do that yesterday was Skylar Wallace. Ground ball to Pleasance. The flip to second for one, and that's all they'll get. Corby Otis has outstanding speed, and Carly Petty just held on to it. Two down. LSU trying to go for their 20th turn double play on the season. But you're right, Eric, just too much speed for Modus going down that first baseline, able to leg that one out easily. Florida this year has relied on two outstanding freshman pitchers, and they've had two impact transfers that have slotted right in the middle of their lineup. Otis and this hitter, Jocelyn Erickson, the transfer from Oklahoma. Erickson with a team high 51 runs batted in. Seems like she's just been put in the perfect spot in this order because when you have teammates like Kendra Falby, like Skylar Wallace in front of you, it always seems like there's an opportunity to score a run because of how often those players are getting on base. One and two. There's a Florida team last year that had 38 wins. They already have 33 wins here in early April. They were below 500 in SEC, so Tim Walton knew he needed a bit of a jolt. Got it with a couple of freshman recruits and a couple of transfers. For as many newcomers that they have this year, of course, they've had to rely on those freshman arms in the circle because this is a team that returned zero innings pitch from last season. Called strike three, Lynch gets Erickson looking for the strikeout to retire the side. We played one in sunny Gainesville. What a cool moment to support their coach, too. Got to chat with her about that before the game. I think we were smiling a little bit more than, of course, she's very <laughs> honored that the team was wearing them, of course, that they thought of her. We did have the inside scoop on these T-shirts, too. 
Yes, before batting practice yesterday, the LSU staff couldn't wait to show you what they had in store for their head coach. <laughs> Popped up behind the plate. There's Erickson to retire Lynch. A couple of two-way players going head-to-head -head here as Lynch fouls out. One away. Keep talking about all these games within the game, too. That's another one, along with the shortstop battle that we're having, the battle of the two-way players between Kelly Lynch and Ava Brown out there in the circle. Both of them phenomenal pitchers and hitters. Hitting for themselves today. And Strike it's one to Petty. Not something that you see very often, and I decided to go ahead and look at some <laughs> of the, the two-way <laughs> players that are Maddie across did, the country. Maddie did one of her patented deep dives <laughs> <laughs> late last night, early this morning. So what did you find out about some two-way players? Well, you just don't see them very often because it's hard to balance to have that time management to dedicate as much time in the circle as you do up at the plate, and, and I always find it fascinating to see the players that are able to do it and able to do it at such an elite level throughout the country. And looking at just some active players that are playing right now in D1, of course, one that comes to mind is Valerie Cagle for the Clemson Tigers. You've got Bree Copeland for Indiana. And a couple others, too. I was looking at the leaders in strikeouts pitching-wise this year to see how many of those pitchers hit and pitched. And there's so actually did, quite a few of them. You did the deep, deep, deep dive. This is deep, deep, deep to center field. Falby at the track doing what Kendra Falby does, hauling it in for the outs. Two down. All right, here's a little support for what you're talking about with the two-way players, at least in this matchup here today. They've both been outstanding at the plate as well. Brown, last weekend, she had a couple of home runs in that Mississippi State series. Both of them with ERAs under three, a lot of run production from both of these batters, too coming from the right side, but when you look at the, the strikeout leaders across the country in, in pitchers that are top 20 in strikeouts in D1, Rissa Baez for Western Michigan is somebody that's a two-way player. She's got two home runs on the year. Both of them have either been go-ahead or game-winning home runs for Western Michigan. Please pause. Just let the record show that Maddie got in a Western Michigan <laughs> reference. I did. If you, if you go check their coaching roster, you'll see the name Shipman. You'll see a there. familiar name on that on that coaching staff. <laughs> Maddie's dad is on that staff having a great time up in Kalamazoo. I interrupted you. Go <laughs> ahead. I just I couldn't stop. <laughs> Got to go down my list even more. <laughs> yeah. uh, Josie Newman, another two-way player for Southern Indiana. And Allison Benning for North Florida is leading her team in both batting average and ERA. So a lot of really spectacular two-way standouts across the country, not just here in the SEC. Three and one now to Mackenzie Rudity with two down here in the second. Ball four, two out walk. Second base runner for the Tigers. Brown trying to go with that change up. Just missed a little bit low in the zone. A solid at bat there by Rudity. Not an easy pitch to take. But tried to use that hitter leverage count, that three run count to her advantage and be a bit more picky about what she wanted to swing at in that count. Now strike one to Bajaran, number eight hitter. Did you, when did you give up pitching? Like there was a time where you were a two-way player. There was a very brief moment in time, yes, about uh, right before I played 12 and under ball. I pitched when I was eight, nine, and 10, maybe 11. Right about 12 was then when I decided to You realized to you'd let, you could throw twice as hard overhand than <laughs> underhand because <laughs> you just had. Believe it or not, I was the smaller player on my teams. I was always one of the smallest ones. Soft liner foul. I know that's hard for you to believe sitting next to me right now. <laughs> you mean you weren't six feet tall when you were 12? I was not. Nope, I was not always this tall. There are times where I like to joke that if I knew I was going to be six feet tall, maybe I should have stuck with the pitching thing a little bit longer. But I love playing shortstop. Do the one-two again. Bajran, one of just two right-handed bats in this lefty dominant lineup for LSU. Lynch the other. Another one, two for Brown. This is two and two. And 
your two-way player research wasn't the only research you were doing. You looked up Ava Brown's numbers against lefties. I know she's facing a righty right now, but she's been outstanding against lefties this year. It's a really good-looking curveball, too, and that's the pitch that she's going to throw a lot more to the righties. Line shot to center field. Falby couldn't get it. It gets by her. This is going to put LSU on the board. Rudity scores in the second, goes Bajoran. Falby gambled. It didn't pay off. one nothing LSU. There's the element of risk versus reward when you decide to dive for those balls, especially straight out to center field. Takes a couple of steps forward, and it almost looks like because she went with two hands there, couldn't get fully extended with that glove hand to get it down far enough to keep that ball in front of her. And a great jump by Rudity off of first base. Cook Beth, excuse me, Cook Beth Carina sending her the entire time as she's rounding third base taking advantage of that slight miscue out in center field. Not too often do you see balls put in play getting past this Florida outfield, but because Kendra Falby decided to try to dive and keep that one in front of her, allows LSU to score the first run of the ball game. Scored a double in an RBI for Bajoran. That's her 14th run batted in. Soft liner foul from the number nine hitter, McGee. Almost looked like maybe Falby got caught kind of in between on that one too, decided maybe she was gonna lay out forward for it, but and then at the last minute decided to stay back. Great point, because it was hit right at her. If it's just hit a couple of feet left or right of the angle she's taking, she can kind of reach instead of having that glove open and then risking bending the wrist back or hurting yourself. You, there's just so much ground you can cover there, and it's gotta be perfect, and she just came up short. And that decision has to be made so quickly yes. too, and it looked like it was hit off of the end of the bat. It was a curveball outside to Macy Bajran. So it didn't quite get all of it, and I think that's why it died in front of her glove maybe a little bit sooner than Falby thought it was going to. There's a little soft pop-up on the infield into the glove of Williams to retire the side. Ellen is facing that 2014 team that I, I, I hate to pick at the scab here because it hasn't fully healed, <laughs> I know, but what are some of the things that stand out to you when you think of that Florida National Championship team? The first thing that, that my mind goes to is definitely the pitching staff that they had. We talked about... Hannah Rogers and just the way that she would pinpoint those low and outside corners, both to lefties and to righties, making it nearly impossible to, to get consistently solid barrel on. And she was just so steady every single time that she was out there in the circle. Then you think about somebody like Lauren Hager bringing the heat, lots of curveballs, rise balls, change ups as Reagan Walsh wears that one. Yeah, it looks like this one stung a little bit. That looks like the screwball coming out of the hand of Kelly Lynch. It's going to have some run to it up and inside, and it got a right on the inside of that back right elbow. Yeah, that one definitely didn't feel good. She's still trying to work that one out at first base, standing next to another Florida alum, Charlotte Eccles, coaching first. There's a smile. But looking back at that 2014 team and Delaney Gurley a part of that, Pitching staff as well with her changeup. A lot of tough bats. Bailey Castro, big right-handed bat. So much pop. Christy Merritt, somebody else that had a lot of pop in their bat. Taylor Fuller, Kelsey Stewart, of course. Really solid defensively, offensively, and then Hannah Rogers leading the way in the circle. Are you having flashbacks right I now? Am. <laughs> I am. I, I really am. <laughs> At what point do you name the athletic trainer, <laughs> the physical therapist, the bus driver, like you knew too much about Florida? Of course, they went back-to-back. -back. You just saw 2014, 2015. And this is the hardest question for you, for you to answer, I'm sure. Can you believe it's been 10 years? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It feels like it's been a long time, but at the same time, it feels like yesterday when I think about some of those matchups between all of the teams in the SEC, really, but it's really exciting to see just how much the sport has grown, how much the league has grown. You just look at the crowd here in Gainesville today. People lined up all on the outside of the fence. Kistler fouls it out of play. Even looking around the SEC, Arkansas packing in over 3,800 at one of their games this past weekend. So just to see the, the growth and the interest level and the fan base and all the young eyes that are out there watching these young ladies perform, too, it's really exciting to see how much excitement there is around the country for this sport. Two and two now to Katie Kistler. Hey, 
Another one out of play. LSU always has a good crowd, too. Oh, yeah. Packing the berm out there in the outfield. Packed stands. I believe it was Bark in the Park Day for them not too long ago. So not just a bunch of fans, had a bunch of dogs out there, too. I know Amanda Scarborough listening somewhere <laughs> loves Bark in the Park Day. Kistler fouls it off again. Kelly Lynch, last start was game two of the Texas A&M series, went five and two-thirds, gave up six hits, a run. Walked six, so had some control issues in that game, struck out six. Spent four years at Washington, made 71 appearances in the circle. This one is drifting out of play. Good battle by Kistler, ninth pitch of the at-bat coming up against the senior who is celebrating her birthday today. Got locked up by Lynch. Lynch gets her second strikeout. What a way. Tonight, ESPN Hockey Night. This week, Nathan McKinnon and the Avs hosting the Dallas Stars. Our coverage will start at 10 Eastern and 7 Pacific. What a sports day. We've got a gorgeous day here with LSU taking on Florida. Lots of great softball games being played here today. Already Tennessee got the late three-run home run to knock off Georgia. Sophia Nugent with that shot in the sixth inning. Got the Women's Basketball National Championship. 3 p.m. Eastern time on ABC between undefeated South Carolina and the Iowa Hawkeyes. One one to Ava Brown. It's in there for a strike. It's one and two. We've seen Kelly Lynch throw quite a few of those changeups so far in this ball game, and she's been able to nail them for strikes too. Even the times that she's missing with those pitches, just missing barely low and out of the zone. Really like those spots early in this ball game for her. Then goes right back to that curveball. Good take by Ava Brown, didn't miss by much, but good spin on that location. The curveball is something that she's added to her repertoire since being at LSU this season. Throwing it quite a bit more than we've seen her throw in the past. 2-2. Two -two. High fly ball right along the foul line and put away by Ali Newland. Two down. Newland doing a nice job of shading the sun using her glove out there in left field. We saw Corby Otis do something similar for Florida. And now another ball hit down the left field line. She's got the visor, she's got the sunglasses, using the glove. She is prepared for any possible situation out I, there in left I'd field. I'd almost say she's prepared for a total eclipse, but that's tomorrow. <laughs> Even that's not safe enough, people, okay? Don't look at the eclipse if you're if you're looking up tomorrow. That's my public service <laughs> announcement. Is. Something happened along the way. When we were kids, we were just frightened about an eclipse, and now people are spending thousands of dollars on hotel rooms in the path of totality. You didn't know we were going to have a little science I, exper I did not. conversation here. <laughs> but the Ali Newland look is close to being safe, but it is not. Swung out a miss by Kowalewski. You see those hesitant swings, especially from the left-handed batters on that rise ball, just not picking it up out of the hand. The way that they're swinging, it's almost like they're anticipating it ending up right about mid-thigh, even to belt high, and that thing just shoots up in the zone. Called strike three, second strikeout of the inning, third of the game for Kelly. She correctly predicted to her team after that game that within 10 minutes, this is going to be a viral thing, and that's not a good thing. <laughs> it was her laying on the ground in Baton Rouge. And here we are several years later, <laughs> continuing to play it, it over and over again, because it is that good the, of a clip. The gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Sierra Briggs sacrificed her first time. You know, it's interesting, this lineup, when we talked to Beth Trina about the bump in the road for this LSU team. Remember, they are 24-0 and to start the season, but a season-ending injury to Danica Coffey, their leadoff hitter. 
it took a little time, but eventually it showed that they needed to readjust, recalibrate. They had Briggs in the leadoff spot for a bit. And I think Beth Torina just thought, we've got too many moving pieces. we got to put people in the roles they're comfortable with and get back to doing what we did in those first 24 games of the season. Well, when you lose somebody like Danica Coffey because of the production that she has offensively and defensively, you think you've got to move the pieces around to try to make up for all of that production. But they're so strong top to bottom. They have so many veteran batters that they ended up just going back into those spots that they are most comfortable. Sierra Briggs has really found a home in that two spot. She's so good in that spot being able to read defenses. Even in this at bat alone, you've seen her go to the slap. We saw her sack bunt back in the first inning just reading the defense. Just going back to what makes these players so great, finding the right spots to put them in. And LSU playing much better now. Soft liner off the glove of Wallace. Briggs running hard around first will hold at first. And so Sierra Briggs extends her hitting streak to 10 games with a one-out single. Skylar Wallace doing everything she can to try to rob Sierra Briggs of the base hit here. Just tips off of the edge of her glove. A nice battle there by Briggs going back to the slap. Slaps that one back up the middle for a one-out base hit. Here is Taylor Pleasance, who flied out to left her first time. Ball one. Where was that pitch, Blue? That's right down the middle. Let's go. On, Ava. Pleasance with 43 career homers. Takes a strike. It's one and one. That's fourth on the all time list at LSU. Third on the all time list at LSU and runs batted in with 205. Hmm. One and two. It's pretty crazy to, to look at her numbers from last season. Ended up batting 346 on the season with eight home runs and to think that she was somebody that was dealing with an injury through majority of the season was practically swinging with just one arm up at the plate. But she just has that much talent, that much power and just seems to get better and better every year. Her yes. confidence in the box, the walk-off home run that she hit against Texas A&M, and Emily Kennedy pumping in that 70-mile-per-hour lefty curveball. Strikeout for Ava Brown, two down. This is an LSU team that does not strike out very often. Just the 91st time an LSU player has struck out it's the best in the SEC. Ava Brown got Taylor Pleasance to chase at this screwball way outside. Last at bat, Taylor Pleasance hit a fly ball out to left field on a pitch up and inside. Opposite field, Gutierrez over the head of Otis. Briggs has great speed. She's around third. She'll score, and LSU has a 2-0 lead. Raylene Gutierrez with the two-out double to put LSU up to. This at bat is a prime example of using your teammates at bat ahead of you to try to come up with a game plan. Raylene Gutierrez just watched Taylor Pleasant strike out on this same exact pitch right before her at bat. She comes up, she decides to go up there and hunt that pitch, look for that screwball outside, gets right up on the plate, goes with that pitch, and drives it out to left field for an additional LSU run. Fly ball to left. Otis can see it and haul it in to retire the side. Ella trying to even up the series after dropping game one to Florida. 4-2 last night. 9-1-2 for the Gators. Avery Gells to lead things off for Florida against Kelly Lynch. Ball one to Gells. Gells getting the start at first today. Ava Brown over there when she's not in the circle. And Gells will be a defensive replacement. Many games. One on one. As a team, the Gators hitting 365 tops in the SEC. 60 home runs. That's number two in the SEC. Big rip by Gels, it's one and two. We mentioned leading 
the conference with 336 runs scored. So it may be 2 nothing right now, but Florida has proven throughout the season that two runs is usually not enough to a two. And right now, the Gators are having a hard time identifying the rise ball and the screw ball coming out of the hand of Kelly Lynch. We've seen a lot of those halfway hesitant swings on the rise ball, almost like they're just trying to stop their swing as they get into it. That's another, on a plate. Another rise ball up and inside there. Just so much late movement on that pitch. You can see the tight spin that she's got. And when she throws that screw ball to the lefties, it's not going to go up in the zone as much as it's going to run away from the lefties. But when she's able to mix both the rise and the screw ball in there, it's tough to differentiate those two. Popped up on the infield. Gutierrez got a little bit thrown off, maybe trying to avoid the bat. It looked like she hit the knob of it. And just as that happened, it came off her glove and she couldn't control it. She came a long way, too. There is a little bit of a breeze. I don't know if it was enough to bring that all the way to the plate. Gutierrez is usually so sure-handed yeah. over at first base, too. And I think you're right. I had my eyes on that bat as well. And she was looking down, trying to avoid it, looked back up to try to catch that ball. Does not cost LSU as Gill strikes out. Ball be grounded to shorts. Her first time, she takes ball one. Also could be a little bit of strategy on where the defense wants to play against Falby because in yesterday's ball game, we saw her swing away a ton, and now you're seeing the infield playing in because she's gone more to the slap today. Trying to butt her way on, that will spin foul. I think that's where you got to play on her. If she decides to swing away, then you just got to try to keep the hard hit balls in front of you as best as you can, but you cannot give her any room by playing back on the infield because she's going to lay down a bunch. She's going to soft slap it into play. And with her speed, you're just not going to be able to get her out. You can see they're in a few steps on the infield. Bobby slaps it foul. And one of her hits yesterday was actually a Check swing, line drive straight down the left field Got line. Got a lot on and it. She, she hit it hard with authority. 55 hits now for the junior. That's first in the SEC. Third in the conference. Entering play today at 433. See, my check swings barely made it to the pitcher's circle, so very impressed that she was able to check swing that hard hit line drive. So down you're the telling left me Kendra line. has a check swing with purpose, yes. and yours was I'm just trying to spoil a pitch that fooled me, and usually it to was swing another day. Usually it was oh no, I've made the wrong decision. I shouldn't be <laughs> swinging at this rise ball over my head and tried to stop. Swung on a miss. Lynch gets her fifth strikeout, three in a row for Kelly. Two down. That rise ball, she is feeling it today. Look at the late movement here as Kendra Falby's moving through the box, so it's going to be even more difficult for her to get barrel on top of this pitch. Just floats right above that barrel. Already the fifth strikeout on the day for Lynch. This one drops out of the zone to Wallace for ball one. Wallace walked in the first. That will bring her on-base percentage up. It's already sky high, 623 entering play today. Is that pun intended? I, I, I'm picking up what oh, you're putting down no, there. Oh, no, it wasn't. Ah. Yeah, sometimes the best ones are the ones you don't even think about. <laughs> <laughs> Off the end of the bat, blooping back behind third, and McGee just couldn't reach it. One and two. We'll chat with Tim Walton coming up. Talked about his footwear yesterday. I think he's going with the, just a more functional look today instead of the stylish shoes. Yeah, that's. <laughs> the footwear always matches the outfit, though. He's oh, always coordinated. There's always purpose behind what he does. This has popped up left side. Pleasance drifting over, calls for it to retire the side. The series, Tim, however, class of 2014 was out there before the game, and I see the smile. What kind of memories come flooding back for you thinking about that national championship team? Yeah, they sent me the video last night of what they're going to play on the video board, and just seeing back all those cool uh, hits that we had at the College World Series, you know, Aubrey Monroe's first home run, Stephanie Toffs, Kirsty Merritt's, uh, just really cool, and then seeing KD Medina run around the shortstop position and playing really, really well. 
And then obviously the most outstanding player and uh, you know the uh, the female athlete of the year in the SEC, uh, Hannah Rogers was was special. It was pretty cool. Pretty cool moment. It's just amazing. It's been ten years. That's just like that. <laughs> it goes quick. And coach, speaking of that throwback softball, this series really does feel like a throwback in the sense that we've seen the pitchers really battling back and forth. Speaking for your offense, what do you wanted to see them do against Kelly Lynch in the circle in this ball game? Yeah, you know you can gauge a lot. You know we have some pretty good hitters just by the the quality of swing. Uh, they're swinging out of the zone. The swings are disconnected, which tells you that you know Kelly's got her her good stuff working. Her she's dotting her. Her in and out pitch, and then the the rise ball, obviously just playing tricks on you. And we got to do a little bit better job of, uh, you know, again, I, I watched the swing that Skyler had, you know, that ball out of the zone there. Just got to do a better job of being on time, and and again, get the ball where we can hit it and have better swings. All right, Tim, thank you so much. Thanks. That is usually the tell when you're looking at players, and we've talked about all the gaudy offensive numbers for Florida. Just take a look at those two national championship trophies, but. It'll be interesting to watch when Florida comes to the plate in the bottom half. You know, how you pointed out that that rise ball really moving for Lynch and how far off and how the swing sometimes, ooh, that, that was an awkward swing. And it, that wasn't something that we're not usually seeing from Florida. Yeah, and at times it's that indecision with that pitch, too, because you're trying to recognize the spin out of her hand. And, and I think the way that she's been able to throw the screwball is what's throwing the game plans off for the Gators because she's got that mix of the pitch that's spinning in a similar direction but maybe doesn't move up in the zone as much as the rise ball, but she's throwing it for strikes. So you've got to swing at one of them. But if you're going to go after that rise ball, you really have to over-exaggerate and adjust to hit almost a foot on top of where you're seeing that pitch. Carly Petty leading things off for LSU here in the fourth. And Tim was referencing the video. They played a video on the board here in the stadium when they introduced those players who are here on Alumni Weekend from that 2014 championship team. So cool for him to be able to go down memory lane a little bit. I think he'd be impressed that you recited the names of so many Florida players as a rival from Tennessee. He dropped some names in there, but I'm like, I'm, we'll tell Tim tomorrow. Tim, you know, Maddie. We watched. She's tons still in of, shock. <laughs> we watched tons of Florida film before we played them every single year. I'm sure. To the point where we could recognize who was coming up to bat just by the way they walked into the box. That's how much That's film we would try to watch right on them. Yeah. yeah, just to try to get familiar with the opponent. And he said that he's even got some players on his team that operate in that similar fashion, even currently for the Florida Gators. Just misses from Brown to Petty. Count goes full. Jocelyn Erickson is one of those players who likes to watch a ton of film. And you see her right here trying to frame that pitch back behind the plate, trying to pull in that screwball that's just missing outside to the lefty Petty. Soft liner to Gels, who will step on the bag for the first out of the fourth inning. With Caitlin Clark, perhaps you've heard of her. Just a few times, I once am, or twice. I am going to make a bold prediction here, saying that will be the first name called on the WNBA draft. You heard it here first. Really going out on a, a thick branch there. <laughs> Fouled off by Rudity. Count is now one and one. Of course, it'll be Clark in Iowa taking on undefeated South Carolina for the national championship. A little after three o'clock Eastern time on ABC. 14.2 million viewers for that semifinal game between Iowa and Connecticut. Peaked at 17 million. Pretty impressive. <laughs> we were talking about the growth of just softball earlier in this ball game, but how about the growth of women's sports across the country? Tide is lifting all those boats. Three and one now to Rudity. Kenzie scored LSU's first run back in the second. And she's aboard for the second time today, her second walk. Ava Brown trying to work in that three and one changeup, just held on to that pitch a bit too long, sailed up in the zone. Now with one away, runner at first base, trying to see if she can get herself out of the jam. Maybe roll a double play behind her. 60 total pitches so far today, 34 of those being strikes. There's ball one for Brown. She'd probably like to see that total just a little bit higher, and I think after 
Another ball being thrown there. Pitching coach Chelsea Dobbins is going to come out and have a chat with her back. So the bottom third of the lineup has gotten the job done so far for LSU. The 1-1. One, one. one and two. Rudity at first with one down here in the fourth. Two nothing LSU. And the one two. Runs inside, two and two. Yesterday it was Rothrock and Burzon in a pitcher's duel. Today Brown and Lynch going head to head. Grounder to short. Wallace on the backhand. Long throw to first. Not in time. A great defensive play by Skylar Wallace going really deep into that 5-6 hole to try to make a play over at first. Goes for the backhand. Look where she starts here. Takes that really good drop step. Gets it on the backhand. Throws off of her right foot, her back leg, and fires across the diamond over to first base. Not an easy throw to make with all of your momentum going out towards left field, but she made that one extremely close over at first base. Madeline Gilio will run for the catcher, Bajarat, at first. First and second for LSU. Number nine hitter McGee takes ball one. Tigers now with five hits today. A couple of doubles. They had four hits in the entire game yesterday. Quick conversation there initiated by the freshman and Ava Brown calling her catcher out there. Could be just about anything with those quick conversations, even as something as small as where she wanted her to set up or what pitch that she likes in this count. Decides to go with that 1-0 changeup, thrown down for a ball. Good take there by Maddox. The game popped out to second in the second. And she's ahead in the count, 3-0. and Taking all the way, it's 3-1. and one. Down the middle, it's three and two. Battling back from that 3-0 count, two straight strikes. First strike, a little bit further up in the zone, maybe a screwball up and outside. Then comes back with another one right in that sweet spot. McGee, Sierra Daniel getting time at third base with the injury to Coffey. This is a fly ball to center field. Falby moves over. The runners retreat to their bases. Two down. It's a big time at bat for Ava Brown after falling behind a 3 0. Just kept working her pitches outside to McGee to finally get that out, that fly out out to center field. Kendra Falby was shaded over towards that left center gap, but because it was hit off the end of the bat, able to secure that one easily for out number two. And something that Florida always does is they'll play those shifts in the outfield, even if it's just a few steps, taking into account what the pitcher likes to throw, and then, of course, the statistics and analytics behind each batter up at the plate to try to figure out where's going to be the best spot for them defensively to make the most plays. 
hung onto that changeup again. Just a Sailed bit. <laughs> over the head <laughs> of Valley Newland, ducking out of the way of that one. 2 and 0 now the Newland. We've seen the command be a little hit or miss for Ava Brown throughout the game, really to the bottom half of the order. Maybe trying to spot that change up too fine. Two and one. Swung on and hit deep to left field. Drifting back is Otis to the track, has room, and puts it away to retire the side. In the fourth inning, Otis, Erickson, and Walsh to face Lynch. All speed in there for strike one. One to one. It's pretty interesting when you look inning over inning at the work that Kelly Lynch has done so far in today's ball game. First inning, she only threw one first pitch strike. Second and third inning, she threw three first pitch strikes. And then already starting off the fourth inning with a first pitch strike here with that changeup. Has a strikeout at each inning so far. Been very efficient with her pitches in each inning. Working the rise ball, getting a lot of swings and misses at that. That changeup, too, has been another pitch that I feel like has been really effective for her, too. Able to locate it in the low part of the zone, even when it's being called for a ball. She's not missing by much. There's that pitch again. 54 mile per hour changeup outside. Wants to know where that one is missing. Possibly just a bit outside. Line shot, there's the first hit of the afternoon for the Gators. Otis with a solid single to left. Second hit of the series for the Louisville transfer. Florida trying to get something going here. Lynch hasn't gone back to back with changeups many times in this ball game. So after the changeup called for a ball, she goes back to the rise ball. That's the pitch that she's been getting the swings and misses on. And love the adjustment with the barrel from Otis trying to get on top of that pitch in the upper part of the zone and just driving that thing out to left field. Ball one to Jocelyn Erickson who struck out looking in the first. Otis with a leadoff single here in the fourth. Lynch had retired six in a row before that hit by Otis on the 3-2 pitch. Two and zero. Lynch was cruising through the first three. Second time through the lineup now for Florida. Maybe they figure something out. Erickson fouls it off on the 2-0. It's two one. Aggressive with that 2-0 cut on a screwball down in the zone. Jocelyn Erickson so strong on pitches in the lower half of the zone with the way that she's able to use her legs and barrel to get underneath, but does like to use different postures to face different types of pitching. Another rise ball called for a strike there. So oftentimes batters can, can change the way that they stand in the box to try to make those adjustments off of pitches. If you're facing somebody that works down in the zone, maybe getting a little lower. Out of play. And when you face a rise ball pitcher, maybe just standing slightly taller to try to overemphasize getting on top of those pitches. Doesn't have to be something drastic, but just that subtle reminder when you're in the box to adjust to what you're seeing from Lynch. Not again. Come on. How many times did you get her? Let's go. How many times did that happen? Wondering if we're having a little. Communication yeah. issue, technical difficulties. You saw Bajoran calls are signaled electronically from the dugout to the catcher and the players in the field. Erickson fouls it off.
Another 2-2 two, to two, Erickson. Line drive, right field, gloved. Rudity's got it, but dropped it. Everybody safe. Looked like she had it until she didn't. Florida in business here with two on and nobody out in the fourth. This ball hit extremely hard off of the bat of Jocelyn Erickson, goes around that pitch and hits it on a line out to right field. Rudity looked like she had a beat on it. And as she took those couple of steps, it just fell out of her glove. That ball was absolutely smoked out to right field though. A couple of hard hit balls here by Florida in the top of the fourth. It goes for a base hit for Erickson. And the crowd here at KSP getting loud. This one is another hard hit ball, but foul. Now with a couple of good swings here for Florida, some hard hit balls, there is activity down in that LSU bullpen. Number 29 is yesterday's starter, Burzon. That Burzon and Raylan Chafin getting loose out there in that LSU pin. Two runners on board for Reagan Walsh, who had that big swing in yesterday's ball game. Starting to see Florida put some quality at bats together in this bottom of the fourth. Two and one. Walsh was hit by a pitcher first time, was two for three with that three run home run in the game one win yesterday. 13 home runs on the season to lead the Gators. They come inside for a strike, it's two and two. Out of play. Going to be a different look for Walsh in this at bat compared to what she saw from Burzon yesterday. A lot of pitches low in the zone, a lot of drop balls, and now we're seeing a steady dose of screwball, rise balls, occasional changeup for Kelly Lynch. Completely different bat path for those two different pitchers. He seems to be timing that pitch up a bit better than what we've seen from Florida throughout this game. We even heard Tim Walton talking about how they just didn't seem to be on time for that rise ball when they were swinging at it. Coming in about 63, 64 miles per hour. Remember yesterday, it was a long at bat for Walsh, fouled off a bunch of pitches until she got a change up <laughs> that she drove out of the park. No foul balls homer. have gone down into that back foot though. That was something that we <laughs> Much saw. Much to Reagan's relief. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's fouled off. Reagan joined us post game after the Florida win yesterday. And she said that did not feel good. Foul ball off her back foot in that at bat yesterday. And I think I spoke too soon. Did that one hit off of her helmet? She got a piece of that up around the shoulders of the helmet. Hard and inside. Looks like it might have clipped. Oh. <laughs> a little ahead of that one. <laughs> making sure that that one didn't hit off of her helmet again, well out in front. <laughs> Coach Walton might have to be on his toes over there in that third base coach's box. Good battle, though, between Walsh and Lynch in this at bat. Another 2 2. Swung on, hit deep to left. Back goes Newland. And she's got room on the track. Tagging up is Otis heading to third in time. Well, great at bat. Lynch won the battle just barely. One down. Walsh just barely missed another three-run shot. Just getting underneath the rise ball. A nice job by Newland using the glove to shield her eyes from the sun. And how about the heads-up base running by Corby Otis? It would have been really easy for her to just stay out off of second base and see if that ball was going to make it out of the yard, but very smart, went back and tagged at second base to advance to third. Katie Kistler steps in. Takes ball one. Kistler struck out in the second. Go, 
Runs inside, couldn't lay off of it. It's one one Looks like she's all right. This one did not feel good. Another rise ball up and inside. Well, that hits her straight off the shoulder. It didn't even hit the bat at all. Today at 363. Hit 258 a season ago. That one hit her. Another one that came up and in. She laid off this one, was hit by the pitch, and the bases are loaded for the Gators with one out here in the fourth. Nice adjustment by Kistler there, just not being able to recognize that pitch, decides at the last minute that she's going to hold up. It looks like it actually hits off of the mask of her helmet. That thing was so high and tight inside. You're right. Now at the plate, someone trying to help herself. The pitcher, Ava Brown, swings at the first pitch, lifts a fly ball to center field. Sierra Briggs has it. Tagging at third is Otis and scoring, and Florida's on the board here in the fourth. Sacrifice fly for Brown, RBI number 26 on the season. Smart piece of hitting by Ava Brown with the bases loaded, especially with that runner over at third base, less than two outs as a batter. You're just trying to do whatever you can to get that ball deep enough out into the outfield to score a run, and she does exactly that on a rise ball. Now two away, and Florida's able to cut that deficit by one. Ball one to Ariel Kowalewski. Struck out looking back in the second. Tried to check her swing. She did. It's 2-0. Oh. Freshman from Richmond, Texas. With two on here in the fourth. And the count, 3-0. and oh. Three and one. Count goes full. Good battle back by Lynch after falling behind 3-0. and Just stays right on the outside corner to the lefty Kowalewski. Struck out looking on a screwball in her first at bat back in the second inning. See if she goes back to that pitch in this 3-2 count. 3-2 with two down. Runners on the move, and we'll do it again. Swung on and miss. Lynch, first of all, you could still play. We, we agree with that. How has it been being back here in a place where you really helped from the very start get this program going? It's really cool to be back. Just a lot of friendly faces. But the coolest part is just to see how this program has grown, especially under Tim Walton. What he's accomplished here is incredible. But uh, really just the growth of the SEC and what it looks like here in this packed stadium, this incredible crowd. The SEC is just the place to be. And to have been through it and seen the growth of it is really an incredible thing. In this growth, of course, a lot of it has to do with the players that are out there on the field. And you guys have so many veterans top to bottom in your lineup. What do you like from what you've seen from your team so far in this ball game after the loss yesterday in game one? Yeah, I thought we were having better at bats. I mean, Allie Newland just steps right up and starts us off there in the first inning. So, you know, you like things like that. You like seeing veterans just have good at bats, making adjustments, and, you know, coming out attacking. I think it would have been easy to be on your heels today in this kind of a ballpark in this setting, but I like the way our team came out and attacked. Thank you, Beth. We appreciate the time. Thank you. We got to get going with play, but I was going to do a follow up just letting her know that, you know, those t shirts that were designed are just flying off the shelves worldwide right now. But I thought she would take me seriously on that, and then it would throw her off. So. <laughs> I love I those t shirts. I think it's such a great 
a great tribute that LSU did for their coach. And like we talked about not too often, as a coach, you get to be back at your alma mater to celebrate alumni weekend. Briggs to lead it off, 2-3-4 for LSU here. The fifth year, the t-shirts, if you weren't with us earlier. Our favorite Gator with some action shots of Beth from her days. I wonder, will it become an official warm-up tee for LSU as they move further down in this season? I think they should have some sort of friendly in-team wager where at some point Beth has to wear that shirt. You know, like if she loses the bet, she's got to wear the shirt because she wasn't thrilled with it. I know she's flattered, and she she told us in all seriousness how much she loves being around this team. That it's just such a great group, and you can just tell they have a great family thing going, and that makes the season that could be long because, as you know, you played it. The season starts and it never ends. It feels like, and it just makes it just so much more enjoyable when you love going to work every day. And I think that that t-shirt honestly is a prime example of the support that these players have for each other, have for the coaching staff and vice versa. And that's exactly what you want from a program to have everybody fully invested in everybody else in the program, wanting the best for them, wanting to see them perform at the absolute best level year in and year out. Fouled out of play. And very kind words to say about where the program is now. Of course, she wants to beat Florida, but just think about from that time when you were a walk-on at Florida in 1997, and now you come out here in national television audience, full house, complimenting the work that Tim Walton's done, winning two national championships and building this program. Briggs foul ball. Looks like a home, home plate umpire called that one yeah, foul. Called a foul ball, so she's going to come back. And a bad call at first. She unofficially beat it out over at first base. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if, if you know you had one card that you can play, can I please take that <laughs> being a fair ball? But. Close play down there at first, too. Wasn't foul by much, but good though. call. Yeah, definitely a good call. Takes the ball, it's two and two. Back to your point though, Eric, I think it's hard to when, when you're in the league and you're in competition mode, in competitive mode, it's hard to take a step back and just realize how much the sport as a whole has grown. Through the whole base hit for Sierra Briggs, that's her second hit of the day, leading off here in the fifth. Hold that big crowds, high level of play, interest continues to soar in softball and you can get caught up in the moment too much, but when you take that moment to step back and just look at the big picture, like you're saying, it's, it's amazing how the sport continues to grow. And a big reason why it continues to grow is because of the athletes that you see out on the field, the star power that we're seeing just in this series alone. Nice block back there by Erickson, but you've got Taylor Pleasance up at the plate, who is a name that we've gotten so familiar with just writing into our scorecards for what feels like the past decade. <laughs> On the flip side, you've got Skylar Wallace over there for Florida, and even some young players up and coming in the SEC. Oh, gloved by Brown, but threw it away. Briggs will have to hope at second base. Remember, Brown usually plays first base when she's not pitching, showed the glove, but then just hurried it to second. It'll be an error on the pitcher. This one hit hard off of the bat of Pleasance. Another outside pitch. She is so athletic in the circle. And she just pulled that throw a little bit too far on the shortstop side. Third. Takes ball one. Going to be interesting to see where Ava Brown decides to pitch. Gutierrez, you just mentioned that double was working the outside part of the plate to Gutierrez with the screwball. Goes back to it. Ball for that RBI double. This one skipped up, knocked down by Erickson. The runners hold at first and second. Neva Brown has really good numbers against left-handed batters so far this season. Coming into this ball game, just a 155 batting average against when she's facing lefties, and it's because of that screwball that she's able to locate right on the outside edge of that strike zone. But I love the aggressive mentality of Gutierrez to go up there and take it away on the first pitch of the at-bat. Shallow center field. Falby comes on and makes the catch. There's a look at that trademark Florida defense. Falby with the grab, one away. 
She tried to make a grab like this earlier in the ball game. This one hung up in the air just a tad bit longer off the end of the bat of Raylene Gutierrez. A great jump by Kendra Falby out in center field. Goes for the sliding grab and immediately comes up, pops up and throws it to second base just in case she was able to get a double play on that one. You can see maybe a little numb in the glove arm after sliding and making that grab. Strike one to Lynch. Pitcher facing pitcher here in the fifth. 0 oh and 2. Lynch 0 for 2 against Brown. 2 and 2. Couple of close curveballs outside, back to back to Kelly Lynch. Good takes, especially after being down 0 and 2. Good calls back behind the plate, too, just missing off. After falling behind 0 and 2, the count is now full. Out of play. LSU scored one in the second, one in the third. Falby with a run saving grab here in the fifth. Fly ball to left, going back is Otis to the track and has it for the out. Tagging up is Briggs and the throw gets there but is on the dirt and Briggs is hurt. She's safe at third, moving up to second is Pleasant, but all eyes on Sierra Briggs. Who needs a moment after that tag. Briggs dives in hard into third base. Helmet looks like it hits the knee of Kowalewski coming in to cover third. Third for Petty. Strike one. LSU 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position this afternoon. But they do have two two out hits. One and one. Petty 0 for 2, flight out to center in the second, grounded to first in the fourth. Two and one. This was the part of the order that we talked about at the beginning of the game that needed to come up with some more production for the bottom half of the order for LSU. Mentioned that 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position so far today. Florida 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position off her left foot is still on the base so as long as that left foot doesn't leave the base before Ava Brown releases the ball you're good to go but we mentioned it that's something that's been new to softball this year being able to review those plays and doesn't mean I like it but if I'm a coach I'm absolutely going to use it because it could completely change the outcome of the game especially in a situation like this where you've got two runners in scoring position two away something as little as that going to video review there could put your team in the dugout to hit. Count is now full. Still doesn't mean I like it, but I would be using it to my advantage if I were on the field. It's the third time you said that, so I'm beginning to think you really don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> 3-2. Fly ball to left. Otis under it. And that will do it for LSU here in the fifth. At 64 miles per hour, and a lot of the swings that you're seeing are from the Gators well out in front of that pitch. 
trying to get it before it rises, but just still swinging underneath that pitch. Avery Gales to lead things off for the Gators here in the fifth. One on one. Two finals in around the SEC. Tennessee in the game before us here on ESPN2. Got a home run from Sophia Nugent in the sixth inning to knock off Georgia and win that series without Kiki Malloy. South Carolina. Gets a win against Mississippi State. Mississippi State had won the first two games of that series. But the Gamecocks take the series finale 3 1. 1 2 2 Gels. Nationally, eyes on that Oklahoma Texas series. Oklahoma behind Kelly Maxwell, one game one, and then a thriller last night with Texas. Talk about. Talks about plays, conversation about plays, debates about <laughs> plays. We were chatting about how that game ended with our umpire and crew here today before the game. Texas winning 2-1 to end Oklahoma's 40-game winning streak in Big 12 play. Yeah, I was curious to see how that call was going to go watching that OU Texas game. The throw coming in from the outfield, the runner rounding third base for Oklahoma. Reese Atwood behind the plate for Texas. Swung on a miss, seven strikeouts now for Kelly Lynch, one down here in the fifth. There's another example of that screwball outside to the lefty batters. Great spin, late run on that pitch too. These lefties having to decide if they want to go after the rise ball or if they want to go after the screwball that stays about thigh high. And so far they've been caught in between all game long on those pitches outside. Top of the order, fall beat. Little tap out to shallow left. That's going to drop in for a base hit. And Falby doesn't even think about stopping around first base. She's in with a bloop double that barely made it to the outfield. Kendra Falby is so good at reading the outfield and taking the extra 60 feet. She's slapping through this one, gets underneath the rise ball, way up and out of the zone, and just drops it out into no man's land in between Taylor Pleasance and Allie Newland out in left field. And look at how her eyes are on that ball the entire time that she's rounding first base, able to get that explosive step off of the base. Twelfth relief appearance for Burzon, and she starts with strike one to Skylar Wallace. So she comes into the game and faces the top hitter in the SEC. Wallace was 0 for 1 with a walk against Lynch. 1 on 1. Talking to Coach Walton before this series, too, he said one of the keys for his offense, specifically going up against LSU, was going to see how quickly they could adjust from low to high and then hard to slow. Low to high, high hard to slow, high to low. <laughs> all the things, <laughs> all of them, all wrapped up into one. Got me even tongue tied up here you, in the you, booth. You, you, just, had, you had a pitch salad going on I right did, there. I did. I <laughs> did. But just to see how quickly you can make those offensive adjustments depending upon which pitcher that you're facing out there. Hard grounder to Pleasance at short. The throw on to Gutierrez for the out. So the dangerous Wallace is on. And here is Otis. Singled and scored in the fourth. Hit the right field. It's down for a base hit. Falby around third. Here's the throw. Falby is safe. Florida has tied it up. Corby Otis comes through for the Gators. We talk about those swing adjustments, and this swing by Corby Otis is a prime example. She got a hit on a rise ball off of Kelly Lynch in her last at bat. Flipped gears, went for something low in the zone. Look at the way that she stays behind that ball, drops the barrel underneath that drop ball, and drives it the opposite way out to right field to tie up this ball game. Strike one to Erickson. Tim Walton was talking about Corby Otis this week to us, and he said, she's one of the smartest people you'll ever meet. That could be in softball, also in the classroom, a, a future cardiothoracic surgeon. 
I don't think I'd, I'll even dare trying to say that right now because <laughs> with the way that I'm getting tongue-tied up here, it's not going to come out the way that I want it to. But a smart <laughs> adjustment at the plate for Otis to get her second hit. Took her MCAT, too, I believe, already. That's inside. It's 2-1. and one. Using that knowledge to her advantage in that at bat. Not easy to one at bat go up there and try to hit a rise ball the next at bat. Hit a pitch in a completely different location, but she did it so well. So the book is closed on Kelly Lynch. Four and a third, three hits, two runs. It'll be a no decision for Lynch here today. But to Maddie's point, pitched very well for LSU. That's down to Erickson for ball four, two on with two out here for the Gators in the fifth. A familiar situation here for the batter stepping up to the plate. Against Sidney Burzon in the circle, Reagan Walsh had that tremendous battle of an at-bat in yesterday's ball game. Be interested to see where Burzon decides to throw her here with another two runners on board. Walsh hit the changeup with two outs in the six for a three-run home run to put Florida on top, four to one. LSU scored a run in the seventh, but the Gators won it by a final of four to two. If I had to guess, I'd imagine that she's gonna see a steady dose of those drop balls low and inside. Goes right back to it, a big swing and miss there. Look at the arm side run on this pitch too. It's not just dropping down, but working its way inside to the righty Walsh. Another drop swing and a miss, and that is it for Walsh. But Florida ties it up, and at the end of Florida, game two of the series, game three, Monday nights on the SEC Network on a mic'd up Monday. Strike one to Rudity. Been aboard twice. Walked and scored in the second, walked again in the fourth. Pop up. Wallace looked like she was going to be the first one on it, but then looked over to Kowalewski, who is right under it. Now it's put away by the third baseman, one down. Good communication on the left side of the infield. Had quite a bit of time because that fly ball hung up in the air before it landed into the glove of Kowalewski. Another quick at bat for Ava Brown, too. Just two pitches already, one away. Inside for ball one to Bajaran. She had a good day. Doubled in a run in the second, singled in the fourth. Two for four now in the series. Counts two and oh. LSU has done a nice job of trying to run up the pitch count in the last two innings against Brown. She threw 55 pitches, but LSU could not manage to score a run in either the fourth or the fifth. There's a strike. Looked like Bajoran was taken all the way on that 2-0 pitch. See those pitches by inning 28 and 27 in the fourth and the fifth. That one gets away, it's three and one. Ava Brown walking a little gingerly after that pitch. Taking a second. Long conversation between those two, Jocelyn Erickson and Ava Brown. Looks to be all right, getting right back out there on the rubber, maybe just a bit of an odd release point with where that pitch sailed. Three and one now. Line foul. It's another thing that we've seen quite a lot of from LSU today. A lot of those foul balls down that left field line or the right field line for all of the lefties that they have in their lineup. Seems like when Ava Brown's falling behind in the count, the way that she's been able to get back into at-bats is by getting LSU to swing on the inside part of the plate. 
That's out of play. Another foul ball, another off-speed pitch to 56 miles per hour while you're on out in front. And as we've talked about, it's tough to strike LSU out. Toughest team to strike out in the SEC. One strikeout yesterday was the final out of the game. And just one strikeout so far today for Brown. Looking for number two here against Bajoran. Who puts it in play? Soft liner to left. Otis, two down. Good location, too, as she fought back in that at bat. Just trying to get it up and underneath the hands of Bajoran. Gets enough arm side movement on the screwball, too. Likes the location. Feeling it after that pitch. You wonder if it tracks back to the conversation that she had with Erickson, just how they were going to approach this one hitter. You just, just a little connection after the play. Happy it, with the way she executed that pitch. And there was the one pitch that the release point seemed to be off. It sailed not even close to where Jocelyn Erickson was set up. So maybe she just wasn't feeling that particular pitch in that at bat, wanted to go to something else, something that she felt more confident in. Michaela Walker pinch hitting here with two down in the six for LSU. Goes back to that change up there for strike one. Nothing like trying to play against possibly the aggressiveness of a pinch hitter coming off the bench with the change up. And how about back to back change ups there too? Eleventh game for Walker this season. She's one for ten at the plate. That one is hit hard, but foul. Sophomore from Marietta down in the count one and two. Checked her swing. Two and two. Close one, but watching it live looks like the right call. I think that's the right call on that. It was close. Called strike three. Second strikeout for Ava Brown, and that will. Ball one to Katie Kissler leading off for the Gators here in the sixth inning. Kessler struck out in the second, was hit by a pitch in the fourth. Two and oh. There's a look at that off speed rise ball that you're going to see Burzon throw. She's got two different off speed pitches. One's more of a true changeup that's going to drop down in the zone. The other one comes out of her hand looking like a slow rise ball. Three and oh. Not able to find the strike zone yet against Kissler. All the speed that Florida has, the last thing you want to do is issue free passes. Three and one. Comes back in with another rise ball that she's able to pump in there for strike one. You'll see it come in about 59, 60 miles per hour. That change up's going to be about 55, 56. Back up the middle of base hit, leading things off in the six for Katie Kissler. Kissler fired up as she reaches first base to start off this inning. Got to a good hitter leverage count. I like the aggressiveness here, too. Burzon goes back to her bread and butter. That's the drop ball down in a way. And Kissler gets enough of this one to pound it down into the dirt, get out into center field for the leadoff base hit. Ava Brown, 0 for 1, with the sacrifice flying an RBI. No pitch, time was called. Looks like a pitch clock violation. Umpires pointing to Burzon. So it's ball one. You have to separate your hands by the time that that pitch clock reaches zero for the pitchers. And you see the pitch clock here at KSP, just a little bit outside of our usual camera look from center field you just saw as we pulled out. The pitcher can clearly see it. And it's not just when the pitcher starts their motions, but their hands have to separate. 
two and one. And in that case, so when you watch the way that Burzon goes through her motion, her hands don't separate really until that left foot is out striding. So those hands have to separate before that clock hits zero. Two and two. Really haven't seen that called too often as we get deeper into this season, just because the players and the coaches have gotten used to the new rhythm of the game, the yes. pace of the game. It moves much faster. I know even for us it was an adjustment up here in the booth for the first couple of weeks, just how quickly games were moving. Good stop by Bajoran back behind the plate, too. But a welcome adjustment. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. been one of the great things about softball is the pace of play and the tempo of the sport. And maybe it was sliding a little bit, but adding the pitch clock and just making sure things keep moving keeps a great sport exciting. Line shot foul. And a big reason they were able to add that pitch clock and action clock this year is because of the addition of the electronic communication now between the coaches and the battery. And, and you're only allowed to use it on defense, but because the coaches are able to more efficiently communicate which pitches that they want called, that's what allowed for the addition of that action clock. Swung on and missed. Brown down on strikes. Burzon gets her second strikeout, one away. Good location there against a tough hitter. A couple of hard hit foul balls down that left field line. Decides to go with the drop ball low and away. And got Brown swinging on top. Here's Kowalewski who takes strike one. She struck out in the second and again in the fourth against Kelly Lynch, who struck out seven. Time called by Bajaran. And we're ready to go again. Kowalewski bunts it foul. It's 0 2. Kowalewski now behind in the count, just needs to do whatever she can to try to move Kistler over into scoring position. First two pitches was called upon to try to lay down a sacrifice bunt, wasn't successful. Good take there. Kowalewski, freshman from Richmond, Texas. Florida teams we've talked about mix of veteran players transfers and freshmen who have stepped right in two freshmen in the circle to make up the staff for this Florida team for the most part and a freshman like Kowalewski regular part of Tim Walton's lineup Slow roller to Gutierrez at first. She'll go for the tag, and moving on to second is Kistler, two down. You could see a slight pause from Gutierrez. She thought for a second to try to get the lead out over at second base, but I thought it was a really smart play for her to change her mind and just get the sure out over at first base. Katie Kistler does have some speed, and she got a pretty good jump on that slow developing ground ball. It's the right call to go ahead and get that for sure out on the tag at first base rather than trying to get the lead runner at two. So pinch hitter here for Florida, for Gels. Brooke Bernard. 0 for 1 last night. Hitting for Gels with runner in scoring position and two down here in the sixth. Ball one. That's back, and that's off the wall. An RBI double for the pinch hitter. Brooke Bernard comes through. Kistler scores, and Florida's on top with two outs in the sixth. 
more two out late inning magic for the Gators. What a great swing by Bernard here coming in off of the bench, gets a drop ball low and outside. You can see the way she drops that barrel behind her to get behind that softball to keep her hands inside of that pitch to drive it out the opposite direction. A great piece of hitting. You can tell right there that she's heads up in the dugout all game long, learning from at bat after at bat, even learning from her at bat yesterday against Burzon in game one. And a clutch double with two away to give Florida the lead. Back to the top of the order, here is Falby. Three unanswered runs for the Gators. Walsh had the three-run home run last night with two outs in the sixth. And now a pinch hit RBI double in game two of the series. Brooke is now three for 11 this season with four runs batted in. Not easy to come up off the bench too. One of the toughest jobs in the sport is being a pinch hitter. One and two now to Falby. Good swing on that pitch. Talk about those adjustments and how quickly you have to make them. Oftentimes you're only gonna get one shot in an at bat. She sure made the most of it, too. Falby, that's foul ball. Glove by McGee in foul territory. off of Burzon yesterday, one down the right field line. Back in the first inning, it was hit off of first base. The other one was that check swing that she smoked down the left field line. Another 2-2. And the dirt gets away. Bernard will take third. Burzon really trying to spot those drop balls low in the zone and a little bit too low bouncing in front of Macy Bajran. Trying to keep it in front, but it ricochets off of the gear, out to her right, and a good read by Bernard over at second base to go ahead and advance to third. Called strike three, Falby is retired. The shoe batter she faced. Top of the order for LSU here in the seventh. Last chance for the Tigers, and Allie Newland takes ball one, one for three today. Two and zero. Oh. Matter of fact, Brown, the final six batters she faced, she got five flyouts and a strikeout, and it all came after her throwing error. Remember the comebacker? She gloved it, made a really good play, and then threw it out in the outfield. Didn't let it bother her. Settled in. Didn't pitch like a freshman at that moment. Wasn't too big of a moment for her with that mistake looming in her mind. She's really somebody that stays so even keeled no matter what's going on behind her. And we saw a prime example of that last weekend in their series against Mississippi State, which was an absolute battle between both teams, putting up so many runs back and forth, pitchers being moved in and out of the ball games. But a lot of really confident freshmen, young players for this Florida, Florida defense, Florida pitching staff. Rothrock trying to find the strike zone, a four-pitch walk here to Newland, so the tying run is aboard, leading off in the seventh here for the Tigers. This is the part of the order that produces the most runs for LSU. Look at the top four batters in their offense. 20 of their team's 30 home runs so far this year do come from the top four in the order. Briggs pulls it back, takes strike one. Briggs sacrificed in the first. Singled and scored in the third, singled again in the fifth.
101. Hey, meet your sister back there. Let's go. Briggs trying to get Newland in the scoring position with Taylor Pleasance on deck. Looking like she was ready to swing away that time. It's now two and one. Rothrock so far not able to consistently find her command in the circle to start off this top of the seventh inning. Missing outside with that pitch. It's a good take by Briggs. Briggs with a good bunt. Sacrifice will be successful. And moving into scoring position is Newland with one down. Some big time opportunities now for the three spot and the four spot in this LSU offense. Taylor Pleasant stepping up to the plate now with a runner in scoring position. Yesterday against Rothrock, Pleasance had an infield single, a walk, and a pop-up. She was 0 for 3 against Ava Brown. Ball one. Soft liner foul, it's one and one. 59 miles per hour on that pitch, taking a little bit off of it. So far this season, Pleasant's batting over 300 with runners in scoring position. And so far in this series, they've done a nice job of working both of the corners, but really the inside part of the plate, not allowing her to get her hands extended on her swings. There's a strike, it's one and two. Rothrock brings the one, two to Pleasance. Now goes full, three and two now to Pleasance. Good couple of takes there on the outside part of the plate by Pleasance. Screwball, not missing by much, but just a bit outside. The three, two. Ground ball to second. That's Reagan Walsh playing second base right now. She throws on the first. Two down. Rothrock came back in the strike zone, but took a little bit more off of that pitch. And you could tell by just how far out in front Pleasance was on that swing. Hit it off the end of the bat to Walsh at second base to left field. Ball one to Gutierrez. They're being very patient on the outside part of the plate for all these lefties in this LSU lineup. One to one. Went she after. Didn't. Oh, sorry. Yeah, she went after that outside pitch. I, I think Rothrock missed her spot on that pitch. Jocelyn Erickson was set up on the inside part of the plate to try to jam up Gutierrez, but it ends up bleeding out over the outside part. Rothrock fighting her command here in this appearance. Got the win yesterday, trying to pick up the save here today. Two one. Three and one. Hitters count for a good hitter. Raylene Gutierrez tying run 60 feet away. Takes a strike and the count now full. Florida one strike away from picking up the victory. Line drive in the gap that will get down and we're tied. Gutierrez heading to second. 
Her second double of the game. LSU down to their final strike, and Gutierrez ties it up. Such a patient at bat by Raylene Gutierrez. Game on the line, down to their final strike. And this is a screw ball or a rise ball up and outside. And she drills this one, gets around the pitch, drives it out to that right center gap. You can tell where Florida's outfield was shifted, anticipating that she was going to go with and drive it to the opposite field. But she gets down into her legs and drives that pitch out into that gap to tie up the ball game in the top of the seventh. Pinch runner as Maya Townsend will run for Gutierrez. Here's Kelly Lynch. Strike one to Lynch. Lynch, the starter in the circle dip today for LSU, pitched well. Now in a position to put LSU in front in the seventh inning. Down to the count, 0 and 2. Hammered foul. Can't help but think back to the leadoff walk that started off this inning. Oftentimes those leadoff walks and those free passes can really come back to bite you and that's exactly what we've seen for Florida now in the top of the seventh. Allie Newland coming all the way around to score on that double from Gutierrez. One and two. And we've talked about it all series long, just how many veterans are in this LSU lineup top to bottom. And so they're very familiar with these high pressure situations like this. Very rarely are you going to see them swing outside of the zone. Popped up right side of the infield. Gales calls for it to retire the side. LSU had been. You mentioned the clutch hit by Gutierrez. And on the flip side for Florida, this is the part of the order that you wound up with the game on the line. Strike one to Skylar Wallace. Wallace 0 for 2 today with a walk. Reigning SEC Player of the Year in Skylar Wallace. Misses for ball one. First two pitches of this at bat, both of them being drop balls from Burzon. That's the pitch that she likes to go to. It's got a lot of late bite on it. If there's a spot that you can get Skylar Wallace, it's typically down. Is anything up in the zone? We've seen it time and time again. Her able to get on top of pitches that look like they're well outside of the strike zone and still manage to get solid barrel on them. Two and two. Call strike three. Burzon comes inside, gets Wallace looking for the first out of the seventh. Burzon just peppering drop balls back and forth, outside, inside, goes back to the drop ball on the inside part of the plate. And Skylar Wallace is somebody that likes to toe up on that chalk line, so I get the feeling that she felt that that pitch was much more inside than it actually was, but rings her up on that good looking pitch. Ball one to Otis, who's had a good day. Two for three, a couple of singles, including an RBI single her last time in the fifth inning. Here we go, three, here we go. Two and oh. Hey, they deserve better, Blue. They deserve better. Oh, Otis, a 16 go. game on base streak. After reaching today, two and one. Burzon came on with one out in the fifth inning. Gave up an RBI single to Otis that tied the game. Right. 
2-2 now to Otis. Just missed. Three and two. And I don't blame Burzon for going straight back to that spot. She got it called on the pitch before. Big smile on her face, too. Tries to go back to that same exact spot. Ends up being called for ball three. Line drive, base hit. Third hit of the game for Corby Otis. She has been so impressive up at the plate today in just the way that she's able to manipulate her barrel to a variety of different pitches. Back in the fourth inning, smoked a rise ball up practically at her eyes. In the fifth inning, hit that drop ball low and outside the opposite direction, gets another one. Looks like a bit of an off-speed pitch on that swing and drives it out to left field. Ball one to Jocelyn Erickson. Erickson one for two, struck out on first, single to right in the fourth, walked in the fifth. Erickson the team leader and runs batted in. She gets an RBI here, the game is over. Ground ball to second, could be two. The flip to Pleasance on the first, four, six, three, double play. And we're gonna play extra innings. Petty, Rudity, Bajoran for Beth Tarina's team here in the top half of the eighth inning. Carly's 0 for three. Glide out three times. Take strike one from Rothrock. Those three at-bats were against Ava Brown, who got the start for Florida, went six, gave up six hits, two runs. 0-2. Better start this inning for Rothrock, who had a four-pitch walk to Newland, her first batter she faced in the seventh. Especially when you're a rise ball pitcher, too, when you're falling behind consistently in these at-bats, a lot of the batters are going to err on the side of being more patient because she has so much movement on that pitch up and out of the zone. But right there, once she was able to get ahead 0-2, that's when you start to get those swings at pitches outside of the strike zone. Ball one. I still find it interesting when you look back at that game one and Keegan Rothrock, not a single swing and miss the entire game from LSU. Called strike three, one away here in the eighth. More than one way to get a strikeout doesn't always depend on the swing and miss, but how about another strikeout looking? Had worked the outside part of the plate with the rise balls, Prior to this pitch in the at-bat, decides to work a curveball inside to Carly Petty and just freezes her. Ball one to Rudity. Yesterday's game ended with Rothrock getting her only strike out of the game, getting Briggs looking. And then she gets Petty looking to start the eighth. Two and zero. Oh. These are the types of counts where Rothrock has to be very careful because you don't want to just plant one right over the heart of the plate because these are the counts that LSU is going to be very aggressive in. Good location there, 67 miles per hour. See her mixing speeds with the rise ball too. Some come in at 63, some come in at 67, but just nails the edge of that zone. Two and two. Rudity walked and scored in the second, walked again in the fourth, popped out to third in the sixth. Slap to left, this is gonna get down for a base hit. Rudity with a one out single here in the eighth. 
Solid swing by Rudity, not trying to do too much, not trying to pull it to the right side of the field, but using the spin and the movement that Rothrock has on that pitch outside and driving it the opposite way for a one-out base hit. Here is Bajaran, doubled in a run in the second, singled in the fourth, flied out in the sixth. On well, the bottom of the lineup, seven, eight, nine for LSU, Maddie. Rudy's on base three times today. Bajaran's been on base twice. This one is hit well in the left field, moving back, reaching up, and it's over the head of Otis. Heading to third and sliding in safely is Rudity, and Bajaran delivers with a double. Right on cue, just as you were talking about how good the bottom half of the order for LSU has been today, Bajaran comes up in the clutch yet again. Gets a swing on a rise ball. This one ends up right about at the letters, but does a nice job with her barrel getting on top of that pitch, using the back leg to drive through, get good extension and drive it over the head, hits the wall out in left field, and now two runners over in scoring position. Fourth double of the day for LSU. Out of their nine hits, strike one to the number nine hitter, McGee. She was hit four by Walker and then re-entered after Walker pinch hit back in the sixth. A couple of flyouts for Maddox in the second and again in the fourth. One on one. McGee lifts one out to center field. This will be enough to put LSU in front. Falby with the throw. Here is the runner crossing. Rudity's in safely. The number nine hitter, Maddox McGee, with a go-ahead RBI on the sacrifice fly, LSU 4-3. Just some textbook fundamental softball and making good barrel adjustments up at the plate from the bottom half of this order. After a pitch that was thrown well outside of the strike zone with two runners on board, McKee got the feeling that Rothrock was going to try to bring something into the zone, was aggressive, got underneath it enough and lifted out to center field far enough to allow that run to score from third base and give them the lead. Two of the four runs for LSU driven in by the bottom third of the lineup today. Top of the order, Allie Newland. Newland scored the tying run in the seventh inning on Gutierrez's clutch hit as LSU was down to their final strike. One for three with that walk and the run scored. Looking for some insurance here. Two and one. Two and two. Frustration from Allie Newland after she fouled off that pitch. I think that was the one that she was looking for. Maybe got a bit further underneath it. You can even tell by her practice swings, almost over exaggerating getting that barrel on top of the rise ball. Slapped foul and out of play. Went with the changeup from Rothrock, and the changeup is a pitch that Newland has hit extremely well throughout this season. Even had a grand slam against Texas A&M off of a Shaley Ackerman changeup, straight out to center field. 
Allie was quoted recently saying she's trying to hit a home run every at bat. <laughs> so she will not cheat herself. <laughs> Lays off that pitch, it's three and two. She's made some highlight reel plays defensively in the outfield. Trying to deliver here in the eighth. Battling here in the eighth against Rothrock. Good at bat with some of those swings outside. Just pulling off right at the last minute. Some good last minute movement too from Rothrock on those pitches away to those lefties. Ninth pitch of the at bat. Inside for ball four, two on with two down. Florida not happy about not getting the strike call on that inside pitch. A little bit of an element of surprise after staying on the outside part of the plate to Newland. Every pitch prior to this one, you could see just how crowded she was on the plate. That was an extremely close pitch inside. Similar looking pitch to what struck out Skylar Wallace. Strike one to Briggs. Maybe just moving in a bit of a different direction. Rise ball, or curve ball, excuse me, versus the drop ball. But either way, called for ball four, and now two runners on board. Briggs back up the middle, a base hit. They're going to hold the runner at third, and the bases are loaded for LSU. As Bajaran was running, came very close to Wallace. Watch the shortstop position right there. Wallace had to duck out of the way before a little contact, it looked like. Looks like Sierra Briggs almost hit that one a little too hard, hit it so hard that she couldn't score from second base on that base hit out to center. Third hit of the game for Briggs, and here's Pleasance. Strike one. For Briggs. And this LSU team, that's four hits with two outs. The biggest off the bat of Gutierrez, of course, in the seventh. Pleasant's 0 for 4. The 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One Drop ball low and inside, called for strike two to Pleasants. Haven't seen that pitch all too often from Rothrock. Typically, as a batter, you're getting geared up for those pitches with a lot of upspin. Pleasants fights that one off. Ground ball, two first. That's Gells with it. Ellis Ball struck out off of Burzon back in the fifth inning. Nothing but drop balls peppering both sides of the plate. I'd imagine that she's going to see nothing but those drop balls again in this at bat. Swings at the first pitch, and it's a solid single to left to lead things off for the Gators here in the eighth. But we figured what she was going to see, and I guarantee she knew what she was going to see. 67 mile per hour drop ball, and she hammers it through that 5-6 hole to get something started for the Gators. Florida in rally cap mode. Here's Katie Kissler. Strike one. Kissler singled and scored in the six. She's one for two and was hit by a pitch. 0-2. Oh Ball one. LSU had a 2-0 lead 
Florida tied it in the fifth, went ahead in the sixth. Kistler, fly ball, foul ground, long run, and Gators watch that one drop in in front of the Tigers. Another one, two to Kistler. Swung on and missed, one away for Florida here in the eighth. Kistler saw quite a few off-speed pitches in that at bat. That off-speed rise ball that we talked about earlier then goes with the hard drop ball down in the dirt, gets her chasing on a pitch way low. Nice job by Bajoran back behind the plate too to keep that one in front of her. And a big strikeout for the first out of this inning. Strike one, Ava Brown. Skipped up there for a ball. It's one and one. Brown flied out in the second. Had a sacrifice fly in the fourth. Struck out facing Burzon in the sixth. Five strikeouts for Sydney in relief. Swing and a miss, ahead in the count, one and two. All of her strikeouts today have been on the drop ball. Yesterday had some strikeouts on the drop, some strikeouts on the changeup, even a strikeout on that off-speed rise, but today going heavy with that drop ball down in the zone. Foul tip into the glove of Bajoran, two down. Strikeout number six for Burzon. And it's another drop ball, this one. Low and inside, love the arm side run on this pitch, inside to the right-handed batters. Makes it even harder for them to get the barrel out in front enough to make solid contact with that pitch. Great late bite down in the zone for another strikeout. Pinch hitter for Florida will be Bailey Goddard. Batting for Kowalewski here in the eighth. And Beth Torina will head out to the circle to talk pitching plan with her team, and Walton will gather up his team for a quick conversation. Talk a little strategy here with Bailey Goddard, and I think you have to go up in this at bat trying to take away the drop ball, trying to hunt that pitch low in the zone, because that's going to be the pitch that you're going to see majority of the time. Odds are you're going to get at least one drop ball in an at bat against somebody like Sidney Burzon because that's her go-to pitch. So why not go up there and try to be aggressive on that pitch low in the zone? Drop the barrel, try to do something different to extend this ball game. Goddard, 12 of 36 at the plate. Five home runs, 16 runs batted in. Take strike one. Rally caps, rally visors, rally helmet. Whatever it takes. Checked her swing. It's one and one. And now Florida down to their final strike. LSU was down to their final strike in the seventh inning. Gutierrez came through with an RBI double to tie it up. Can Goddard deliver? Foul tip. Goddard just got a piece to stay alive. Four straight drop balls in this at bat. This one even lower and outside just barely gets the bat on that softball as it's dropping down and away from her barrel. The one, two. Swung on and missed, and that will do it. Sydney Burzon comes on for LSU. Clutch performance in the circle and at the plate, and the Tigers have evened the series with the Gator.